it has been actually quite a journey, an exhilarating journey uh, so far in constructing the experiments and now taking the data and seeing some uh, uh, hints uh, of this uh, Higgs boson. So, uh, in fact, we use the uh, Higgs mechanism uh, uh, because the Higgs mechanism does not predict the mass of the Higgs boson. Uh, and uh, we had to look or design the experiments which could uh, allow us to uh, observe the Higgs boson in its various guises. Uh, it uh, manifests itself differently uh, in our experiments uh, and depending on the mass. So we had to cover a very wide range of possibilities and covering these wide range of possibilities has allowed us to design an experiment we, which we believe can actually discover any phenomena that would be occurring at the LHC energy scale, a scale which is quite uh, unique in fact. It's a, uh, it's a sort of a magic energy scale because uh, things are supposed to happen. Uh, for example, uh, the mechanism of, of generation of mass uh, should be elucidated and the favored conjecture is the Higgs uh, mechanism. One way to look at this as well is to, uh, uh, to, to consider that the proton-proton interactions that are occurring at very high energies, in fact, it's the constituents that hit head on. And uh, such reactions would have been a subset of the reactions that would have been occurring a fraction of a nanosecond after the Big Bang. So we're going back in time and uh, trying to look at what nature was like at that time. What was the composition? What was the particle content? What were the forces that were relevant at the time? And we reproduced those under laboratory conditions. So if the Higgs is found, what next for the LHC? Having found the Higgs boson, we would like then to understand in which context it appears. Does it appear in the context of the standard model? If it does, then its production and it's the way it decays is prescribed in very precise manners. And it's, uh, the lots of measurements that we'll make uh, in the production of the Higgs boson and the way it uh, uh, decays into uh, other particles, uh, we'll be studying these. And that will take quite a lot of time uh, to understand because uh, some of these are processes are quite rare. So it will take us years to understand that. Uh, the next thing that comes up is uh, why actually does the uh, Higgs uh, boson mass uh, appear at order of 100 GeV, 100 times the mass of the proton. Uh, when we look at, uh, uh, when we try to calculate the mass, we have to introduce some things called quantum corrections, uh, which actually make the mass float up to very, very high values, values which we can't even attain. So uh, the thought is that uh, there is some mechanism which protects the mass of the Higgs boson, and there's a new symmetry of nature uh, called supersymmetry. Uh, it's possibly the ultimate symmetry. And uh, it predicts that uh, for every particle, we have a, a, a super partner. Uh, for an electron, there'll be a super electron. We haven't found the super electron, uh, presumably because the masses of the super partners are, are high. And the hope is that we shall find them at the LHC. Now, we are going to go to 14 TeV. Uh, we are operating at the moment at 8 TeV. Uh, and uh, so the hope is that we shall be able to find these particles. So comparing finding the Higgs boson to something outside of physics, how important would you say it is for people that don't necessarily, uh, don't necessarily by nature have an interest in physics? I think the LHC project has uh, captured the imagination in a similar manner to the Apollo uh, moon missions of the 60s. So they capture the imagination of the young and uh, the general public alike. And so they actually attract people into science, the younger people into science, in fact, science underpins all the progress that we've made as humankind, in a sense. So it is very important that uh, everybody has a good understanding of science. So if, if more people uh, go into science subjects, the better it is. Now, the other thing that happens with the LHG project, in a sense, is that uh, the experiments like CMS that I'm working on has about 3,500 scientists and engineers uh, from about 40 countries, similarly Atlas uh, and so on. So this actually makes people work together uh, on uh, problems which are really cutting edge problems in terms of uh, our understanding of uh, our position in, in, in nature as such. Now, the other aspect is that to, to do such experiments, we need actually technologies which are really pushing the frontiers and the limits of the technology or inventing new ones. The World Wide Web is a, a classic example. Uh, where we need to share a large amounts of data that are coming out of these uh, uh, experiments. 
And uh, so the World Wide Web has altered the way we live. So I think that's another aspect which uh, I think uh, is quite interesting for the younger people as well because they have to work uh, in cutting edge technologies with uh, people from different cultures, different backgrounds, and in, in an international uh, setting uh, trying to address uh, fundamental problems.